when is the best time to visit New Zealand? That's what we're going to talk about today. If you don't know us, we are a family of six that have moved from the U.S. to New Zealand and have been in New Zealand for eight years. So I know a lot about New Zealand. I've lived here. I've traveled here. I've pretty much traveled in every area. And let me just tell you the best time to visit. Now, I recently wrote like a 3,000 word blog post on everything you need to know about when to visit. And so what I actually did was had AI create a video with the information that I put in the blog post. So it's all like original thought information from me and put into this cute little video that I'm about to show you. And then at the end, I'll go through and highlight some of the insider tips on when to visit New Zealand. Here we go. Have you ever pondered on the perfect time to explore the spellbinding vistas of New Zealand? If yes, you're in good company. This Pacific jewel boasts a variety of distinct climates, extraordinary characteristics, and experiences that differ significantly between the North and South Islands. From frost-kissed peaks to sun-bathed shores and verdant rainforests, it's a haven worth discovering all year round. But when is the prime time for you? Let's dive deeper into the weather variations that might shape your journey plans. The North Island, known for its subtropical climate, boasts mild temperatures throughout the year. This island is a paradise for those who enjoy a temperate climate, with warm and wet summers and mild, damp winters. The subtropical climate of the North Island makes it a year-round destination. In the summer months between December and February, you can enjoy a dip in the warm ocean waters or sunbathing on the sandy beaches. The winter, spanning from June to August, is also inviting, with temperatures rarely dropping below 10 degrees Celsius. The North Island is not just about the weather, it's a land of diverse landscapes, from the geothermal parks of Rotorua to the bustling metropolis of Auckland and the stunning Bay of Islands. Each of these places offers unique experiences, shaped by the island's subtropical climate. From geothermal parks to vibrant cities, the North Island promises a unique adventure. The South Island, on the other hand, presents a more temperate climate, with warm summers and chilly winters. This unique climate offers an array of experiences each season with its own charm. During the sun-drenched months of summer from December to February, the South Island is a haven for beach lovers and sun seekers. As the leaves change color, autumn from March to May paints the landscapes with hues of red, orange, and gold, a sight to behold. Winter spanning from June to August transforms the island into a snowy playground, perfect for thrill seekers who love to ski, snowboard, or simply enjoy a hot cocoa by a cozy fire. And let's not forget spring, from September to November, when the island wakes from its winter slumber and bursts into vibrant life. Whether it's snow sports or beach days, the South Island is a paradise for every season. Now, let's break down the best times to visit based on New Zealand's seasons. This island nation is a year-round destination, each season offering its own charm and unique experiences starting with spring, which spans from September to November. This time of year is a celebration of new life. The country is adorned with vibrant blossoms and newborn wildlife, making it an ideal time for outdoor explorations. Imagine witnessing the landscape transform into a colorful canvas of flowers and lush greenery. Next up is summer, from December to February. During this time, the weather is warm and the days are longer, perfect for beach days, hiking, and al fresco dining. And let's not forget the festive season, which New Zealanders celebrate under the sun, bringing a unique twist to traditional holiday celebrations. As we move into autumn from March to May, the country takes on a different kind of beauty. The leaves change into hues of red, orange, and gold, painting a picturesque scenery. This is also the season when the country's wine regions are in full bloom, making it a perfect time for wine enthusiasts to visit. And lastly, winter from June to August. This is the time when the mountainous regions of the South Island are blanketed in snow, transforming into a winter wonderland. It's ski season down south, so snow sports enthusiasts, this is your time to shine. But even if you're not into snow sports, the Alpine vistas are a sight to behold. But remember, these are general guidelines. The climate can vary between the North and South Islands and within regions. So it's always a good idea to check the specific weather conditions of the places you're planning to visit. And that's a glimpse of New Zealand's seasons, each offering a unique charm. 
No matter the time of year, this Pacific paradise promises a wealth of experiences that cater to all tastes and interests. So when are you planning your journey to this island nation? But New Zealand isn't just about nature. It's also about culture and festivities. This island nation is steeped in a rich cultural heritage, a blend of Maori, European, Pacific, and Asian influences, which are reflected in its numerous festivals. From the vibrant Pacifica Festival, which celebrates Pacific Islander culture through food, music, and dance, to the Waitangi Day, marking the signing of the country's founding document, you'll find a wealth of cultural experiences. If you're a foodie, the Marlboro Wine and Food Festival is a must. Held in the heart of one of New Zealand's premier wine regions, it showcases local wines and gourmet cuisine. Sports enthusiasts might time their visit for the Hawks Bay Marathon or the Queenstown Winter Festival, which celebrates the start of the ski season. So there's always something happening in New Zealand, no matter when you visit. So when are you planning your journey to the land of the long white cloud? The beauty of New Zealand is that it caters to every traveler's taste, regardless of the season. Whether you're yearning for a summer beach holiday in the North Island or an exhilarating ski adventure in the South Island, the choices are endless. Remember, the North Island, with its subtropical climate, is perfect for year-round explorations. On the other hand, the South Island's temperate climate brings warm summers perfect for outdoor activities and chilly winters for those snow sports enthusiasts. Spring from September to November is a season of rebirth with vibrant blossoms and newborn wildlife. Summer from December to February offers beach days, al fresco dining, and a uniquely Kiwi-style festive season. Autumn from March to May is a wine lover's dream with the country's wine regions in full splendor. And winter from June to August offers snow sports and enchanting alpine vistas. Beyond the weather, the cultural festivals throughout the year are a testament to New Zealand's rich heritage. So it's not just about when you go, but what you want to experience that matters. For more in-depth information, don't forget to visit our blog. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Safe travels. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. I just thought that the, the video and the scenery that they're showing where they're talking so much better saved me a lot of time and money uh, and just doing all of that editing business and just created it for you so you got that. So let's talk some insider tips on when to visit New Zealand. So obviously we've talked about what the weather's like in the summer, what the weather's like in the winter and the different things that you can do and some of the festivals and all of those are really good. This is my opinion. I think that the best time to come to New Zealand is February, March, April. Those are the best because like people go back to school in February, everything's going to be cheaper. There is not going to be crowds and you and the weather, honestly, like in February and March, and it's, it varies by year. We're living on an Island. Like, don't quote me on this. Don't get mad if you come and it's raining the whole time. It's not my fault. I cannot control the weather. I can't. So anyway, so I think February, March, April is your best time to come. If that doesn't work for you, then I would say, um, like right now we are in October and it's still a little bit cold. So November is pretty good. Like, so all of these kind of seasons just before the main seasons are really good. And I would highly recommend. Now, I just want to make some comments about winter because people panic. Like, I don't want to come in winter. So if you are from a state or an area of the world that has winter with snow and cold and below zero. It's nothing like that here. Like it gets like 50 degrees. It's not that cold. <laughs> it feels cold if you're in a windy region or on the coast because we got winds from Antarctica. So it feels really, really cold. It can feel very cold in houses, but seriously, like it's okay. Like it's, it's not that bad. You can have beautiful days in the middle of winter. That's just amazing. And if you're coming here for winter sports, then obviously it makes sense, okay? But if you are gonna risk it, and that's the only time, because a lot of times if you're like, you're a teacher in the US, your only time off is over the winter months. And so it still could be pretty great. Um, you might get a lot of rain, but that's it. But you're not like freezing. It's not like what you're thinking. Because what's nice about New Zealand is it's green all year. The hiking is good all year. So many things are just all year. It's definitely a year round situation. You know, like even if you go to, Southeast Asia, when it's really, really hot, it's quite miserable. Like you can't do anything. Like 
the afternoon everything kind of shuts down but you can't even move it's so hot like there's no time in New Zealand where it's like that where you really you know you can't move whatever so let me just also give you a little insider tip on where I would go if I were to come to New Zealand and it all depends I guess on how much time you have so some highlights I'm just going to give you on the North Island and the South Island and we'll just go with that so obviously I live in Wellington I love Wellington but it all depends on what matters to you if you want beaches you're going to want to go north north of Auckland you want to go Coromandel um, you know just north of there you've got the 90 mile beach on the other coast <clears throat> and then if you go down from there Rotorua is pretty cool if you know you want to see all of the hot springs and that sort of thing there's a great walk the Tongariro crossing is really good on the way down the glowworm caves are really good if you go to Taranaki it's gonna you're gonna have like the black sand beaches those are cool yeah so like really great things as you're kind of traveling down from Auckland and things to see there's not much between Lake Taupo and Wellington so if you kind of want to do a loop around and head back up north you could do that if you were to come to the South Island, definitely Queenstown, definitely Wanaka, definitely Mount Cook. Um, Lake Tikapo is my favorite lake. Um, I would skip Christchurch, to be honest. Um, yeah, Dunedin is, is unique and different. I think it's more different than like Christchurch, but you know, that's a matter of opinion. Um, and then I haven't been too much farther south of there, but definitely spend some time in Queenstown. So I always get this question from people like, I only have a week, what should I do? It's really hard for me to tell people to skip the South Island because the South Island is so unique. I mean, even if you just get over the ferry and do the Abel Tasman National Park, I mean, those golden sand beaches, it's amazing. And you can take ferries going in and out of each harbor. It's very cool. Uh, so, I would try to do both like because it's so different if you can if you have time definitely do both but if you're only here for a week I would choose the South Island over the North Island to be honest I know that generally people fly into Auckland so then maybe fly Auckland to Queenstown do that for a couple days and then fly into Wellington and maybe drive up I mean there's lots of different routes definitely reach out to me if you have some questions or want some opinion or like why why did you say that and what does that mean i'm happy to help just comment below and i hope that was helpful it gives you a, a good idea on when to visit new zealand and some things to do i'll see you next time